so cell towers can be fake? I believe that's what you're likely wondering. Like, who would take the time and spend the money to fake a cell tower? If you're asking those questions, you're not wrong. There are over 300,000 official cell towers in the United States alone. But today, we're going to talk about the ones that aren't on any map. The secret, fake towers set up by hackers and spies to intercept your calls, read your texts, and track your every move without you ever knowing. Welcome to the 21st century, where anything is possible, and cyber attackers will go to any length to get our data and compromise our privacy. So does that mean we're in trouble? Yes, yes, honestly, we are. But is all hope lost? Not at all. And before we go into the technicals, if you want to see how advanced threats like these can be detected in a corporate network, you can request a demo of our AI agents at tlaris.com. Now, let's get into the video. If you're ready, let's go. A tower acts as a relay, sending your data through a vast network of cables and other towers until it reaches its destination, whether that's another phone, a server, or the internet itself. It's a seamless process, orchestrated by sophisticated technology and governed by strict protocols. Each tower has a unique identifier, a specific range of frequencies it operates on, and it's constantly communicating with its neighboring towers to ensure you have consistent coverage as you move around. Now, imagine a malicious actor, someone with nefarious intentions, setting up their own cell tower. But it's not a legitimate part of the network. This, my friends, is a fake cell tower, often referred to as an IMSI catcher or a stingray. An IMSI catcher is essentially a device that mimics a legitimate cell tower. It broadcasts a stronger signal than actual cell towers in the vicinity, tricking your phone into connecting to it instead of the real network. It effectively becomes a man-in-the-middle attack on your mobile communications. Your phone thinks it's talking to your service provider, but it's actually talking to the attacker, who then relays the information to the real tower and back. You wouldn't even notice anything unusual. This isn't just theoretical. IMSI catchers have been documented globally, used by various entities. While official use by law enforcement is often shrouded in secrecy and legal debate, the technology is also accessible to other, less scrupulous individuals and groups. Imagine a journalist or an activist in a sensitive political climate. Their communications are crucial, and their safety often depends on secure communication. A fake cell tower could be deployed near their residence or workplace allowing adversaries to monitor their calls and messages, potentially compromising their work or even putting them in danger. Businesses, especially those dealing with sensitive intellectual property or high-value transactions, are also at risk. So, who is deploying these devices and why? As we touched upon, the spectrum is wide. We're talking about intelligence agencies and law enforcement. For legitimate, and sometimes controversial, surveillance purposes, often with warrants. Criminal organizations, for targeted espionage, information gathering for fraud or even kidnapping. Hacktivist groups, though less common, some might use these for protest or to expose information. Corporate spies, as mentioned, to gain a competitive edge. It's also crucial to understand how this technology has evolved. Early MZ catchers, like the original Stingrays, were large, incredibly expensive pieces of equipment exclusively available to government agencies. They were the stuff of spy movies. However, the rise of affordable software-defined radio, or SDR, has changed the game. SDR allows sophisticated radio communications to be managed by software on a regular computer. This, combined with open source projects, has dramatically lowered the cost and technical skill required to build a basic IMSI catcher. While the most powerful devices are still in the hands of nation states, it is now theoretically possible for skilled hobbyists, researchers, and yes, criminals, to create their own rudimentary versions. This democratization of the technology means the threat is slowly moving from being a targeted tool of espionage to a more widespread risk. Let's get a little technical, but I promise to keep it digestible. When your phone powers on, it automatically scans for and attempts to connect to the strongest available cell tower belonging to your network provider. An IMSI catcher exploits this fundamental behavior. 
It broadcasts a very strong signal, often stronger than legitimate towers in the area. It also impersonates a legitimate carrier, using the same type of identifiers that real towers use. Your phone, prioritizing signal strength, sees this tower and says, hey, this is the best connection, and tries to establish a link. This is a crucial identifier that's tied to your subscriber account. With your IMSI, the attacker can track your location and potentially even impersonate your device to the real network. Once connected, the fake tower then often downgrades your connection. For example, it might force your 4G or 5G phone down to 2G. Why 2G? Because 2G networks have weaker encryption protocols, making it much easier for the attacker to intercept and decrypt your calls and texts. They essentially become a transparent proxy. It's a sophisticated deception. Your phone displays signal bars, you can still make calls, which are routed through the fake tower to the real network, and you can browse the internet. Everything seems normal, but behind the scenes, your private communications are being exposed. So, you might be thinking, I have a 5G phone, so I'm safe, right? The answer is a complicated yes and no. 5G was designed with this exact threat in mind. It introduces a crucial security feature called Subscription Concealed Identifier, or SUCI. In simple terms, this means your phone encrypts its permanent identity, the IMSI, before sending it to the tower. This is a huge step up, as a fake 5G tower would only capture an encrypted identifier it can't use. However, the real world is messy. Firstly, many 5G networks today operate in non-standalone mode, meaning they still rely on the older 4G core infrastructure for certain connections, which can reintroduce older vulnerabilities. Secondly, the downgrade attack is still a major issue. An attacker can jam the 5G signal, forcing your advanced phone to fall back to a 4G or even 2G connection, where your IMSI can still be captured and your calls intercepted. So while 5G is a massive improvement, full protection is not yet guaranteed for everyone. You can learn more about our 5G networks in the video in the description box, or just wait till the end of this one to see it on your screen. Okay, this is the crucial part. While these devices are designed to be stealthy, there are some indicators that might suggest your phone is connected to a fake tower. No single sign is definitive, but a combination of these should raise a red flag. As I mentioned, a common tactic is to force your phone to a 2G network, sometimes displayed as E for Edge or G for GPRS. If you're consistently in an area with good 4G or 5G coverage, and your phone suddenly drops to 2G for no apparent reason, be suspicious. This is a very strong indicator. Your phone works harder when constantly negotiating connections, especially if it's being forced to switch between networks, or if the fake tower is deliberately interfering. If your battery is draining much faster than usual, even when not actively using it, it could be a sign. If you frequently experience dropped calls or difficulty connecting to the internet in places where you normally have excellent service, it might be that a fake tower is interfering with the legitimate network. If your phone frequently switches between different network types, e.g. 4G to 2G, then back to 4G, then to another carrier's 2G network without you moving significantly, this could indicate an attempt to trick your phone. If your text messages are taking an unusually long time to send or receive, or if calls are experiencing strange delays or echoes, it could be due to the rerouting through an IMSI catcher. While not directly a sign of a fake tower, if you start receiving suspicious SMS messages, phishing attempts, requests for personal info, after experiencing some of the above symptoms, it could be that your number was harvested. So, what can you do? While complete immunity is difficult without specialized equipment, here are practical steps to reduce your risk and enhance your privacy. Use a VPN, virtual private network. This is your first line of defense for internet traffic. A good VPN encrypts all your internet data before it leaves your device, making it unreadable even if intercepted by an IMSI catcher. This won't protect your calls or SMS but it secures your browsing and app data. Use end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps for sensitive communications. Ditch regular SMS and use apps like Signal or WhatsApp with end-to-end -end encryption enabled. These services encrypt your messages and calls from your device to the recipients. Meaning, even if an EMSI catcher intercepts the data, it's unintelligible without the decryption key. 
Be aware of your surroundings and signal strength and pay attention to your phone's behavior. If you notice the unusual signs we discussed, especially in new or sensitive locations, be vigilant. In areas known for protests or political sensitivity, the risk can be higher. Disable 2G slash GSM, if possible with caution. Some Android phones allow you to disable 2G slash GSM network modes, forcing your phone to stick to 3G, 4G, or 5G. This can prevent the downgrade attack. However, be aware that in areas with poor modern network coverage, you might lose service entirely. Use this setting with caution, and only if you understand the implications. What are your thoughts on fake cell towers? Have you ever experienced any of these unusual phone behaviors? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe for more videos into tech and security. And remember, awareness is just the first step. At Telerus, we go further by using AI-powered cybersecurity agents that detect, analyze, and respond to threats faster than any human team could. So if you want to know how fake towers, advanced attackers, or even insider threats can be detected before they compromise your organization, reach out to our experts today for a personalized consultation. Or better yet, request a demo of our AI agent and see firsthand how Telerus can help keep your data safe, your business secure, and your future protected. Links are in the description below. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one.